What is up everybody out there? This is Deshaun Reed with Destination Fantasy. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to approach fantasy football players who had a down year due to injury. And on that list, we have names such as Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Burrow, and Odell Beckham Jr. Check it out. Welcome to another edition of the Destination Fantasy Podcast. Once again, I'm here uh, with my brother from another mother, Mr. Deshaun Reed. How you doing this morning, brother? Man, I am a little bit tired. Man, had a long night. Had my had my niece over, but uh, man, I'm I, I feel still feel pretty good this morning. How about yourself? Man, tell me about it. Bro, I didn't get to sleep until midnight. Had the rest of the family up until like maybe four in the morning. And, but we're here. We're we here. here. That, that, that lets you know how much we love what we're doing, man. Otherwise, That's dedication right there, man. Hit the snooze button on y'all. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, the past month, we basically been going over, you know, you know, how to win your fantasy football league and different uh, mock, different strategies on how to draft because drafting is the biggest essential to me on, you know, how successful your fantasy football season is going to go. And so this right here, also is, you know, focusing on how to approach certain players who had a bad season last year, either due to injury, uh, and specifically this topic will be about ACLs, or just in general that guys just didn't live up to expectations. I know, you know, towards the end of last year, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Deshaun had, had a bust of players that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sit too well in his heart. And he and he basically let it let us know what, what that was about. Oh yeah, but, so we gonna we gonna get into a little bit of that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are. All right, so so yeah, today's topic is you know how to approach fancy football players who had a down year. So we know that people in general, you know, sometimes draft with emotion and sometimes draft with a uh, you know recency bias and things of that nature, and rightfully so. You know, if you drafted a guy that's supposed to be, you know, your bell cow, your your go to guy, and he did not live up to the hype for whatever reason, then you're gonna feel a certain type of way next time, next year around when you draft and you see that player's name. It's it's, it's just the way it is. And so, so we have highlighted uh, eight players here, uh, specifically for today's topic, and just gonna go over them and just basically we're gonna give our thoughts about it. Just so maybe if you're on the fence about a certain guy, um, you know, maybe this here might, you know, help you one way or another. And so first segment, we're going to call this the ACL comeback. So we're going to highlight four players here uh, that had ACL injuries. That's probably the four top four players. There's um, that has some type of fantasy relevance. And so with that, we're going to give them a grade. Uh, based on the letters of the ACL. So A is going to stand for A+, plus, as in, um, you know, they're going to exceed expectations this year. You should definitely, you know, jump on that bandwagon. C, they basically just going to be average, you know, nothing spectacular, but they're not going to be trash. And then L, basically, they either lose or take an L, however which way you want to put it. And, you know, they're just not going to be that same player this upcoming season. All right, and so... We're going to go with our first player here who uh, always has a lot of headlines, always in the news one way or another. Um, his name is Odell Beckham Jr. So, Deshaun, without further ado, uh, give us a quick recap on old Odell Beckham here. Okay. So, uh, OBJ, he uh, tore his ACL, and it was actually his left knee. Um, his 2020 stats were 319 yards receiving, three touchdowns to go along with 23 catches. And um, that was out of the seven games that he did actually play in, um, including the one that he actually hurt himself. So um, last year, his uh, ADP was um, 3.12, which means he was definitely somewhere near the first uh, couple of picks in the third round. And um, he actually finished last year as a number 91 wide receiver. Like, I'm looking at that, and that's weird to have his name by. I mean, but again, it was due to um, – you know, him being injured and him just not finishing the season. I think and, he would have played a much, a much better season. And that was week four, right? Or somewhere? Um, I think it was week six or seven. Week six, okay. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, so I mean, it said he was in seven games. So I'm like, I'm right. guessing it, it it definitely had to be week week seven that he uh, hurt himself. So correct. Okay, yeah, you're right. Because I I remember the play where you know Baker Mayfield threw a pick and he chased the guy down, and it didn't even look like much, but those be the worst ones, bro. Yeah, it just freaking nature. So so yeah. Um, I guess at this point, like, how would you grade, based on our grading scale, how would you grade Odell here? I mean, Odell is tough. I think Odell is probably the toughest one to grade considering the style of play in which they recently adopted in the games that they didn't have Odell. They're super run heavy now. Um, you you still do got the uh, – you still got Jarvis, Jarvis Landry there. You still have Austin, Austin Hooper. But uh, clearly, Odell Beckham is the best um, receiver out of that out of that group. And um, I don't know, Jamar. That one is kind of that one is kind of tough. I want to go in between the A and the C. There, I think he'll be a solid B. I don't want to give him an A, um, just strictly based on the style of play in which they have. It's it's um, heavy heavy run style. I think they're going to lean a lot on um, those two backs that they have in the backfield. And um, if I would have to rank him, it would probably be a B, bro, and probably toward, like, the B minus. I think he can – I mean, he clearly has wide receiver one upside, like, clearly, like, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But I think he's just going to be somewhere a little bit above average. I'm going to just call out, like, them stats here. I'm going to say he's going to barely um, eclipse 1,000 yards. Let's say 1,000, uh, like, 90. He's going to have maybe uh, 80-something catches and – about eight to 11 touchdowns. So um, those would warrant somewhere between wide receiver um, two numbers for me. So I would have to give them a B. All right. So I think uh, right now he's currently going, what, around the sixth round? Wow. Was, okay. So there is some there is some value there for sure. So, I mean, based on the scale, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say he's going to – based on his ADP and what happened last year and, you know, the flow of the offense now, I'm, I'm going to say he's probably going to be around the, the average range to see based on ADP and expectations and stuff. Mm-hmm. So so the, OB, the OBJ that we've known from, you know, the Giants, you know, that that's a wrap. That's, that's not happening in his current condition. Maybe if he gets traded somewhere and becomes the number one option again, maybe you probably see a spike in his production. But right now – based on the system and if they're running that current system like they did after his injury, which I'm pretty sure they will, that, you know, the team is, you know, run first, use the play action uh, to, to, you know, get help get the wide receivers open and, you know, go from there. Wide receivers are a secondary option for the Cleveland Browns. Absolutely. And, and so that means Odell Beckham will have to play within the system. So that right there all, you know, limit his, you know, production. Overall, his 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 reach, and so yes, he's the most talented wide receiver. Still, one of the most talented wide receivers in the league. Definitely the most talented on the team. So I'm definitely gonna say say average. He's gonna play as you know a wide receiver too as he should in that in that ballpark. Um, I mean, could there be times where he finished in the top ten a couple weeks in the season? Sure, but more times than not, he's gonna give you wide wide receiver two production. Um, you know, once again, he's coming back from ACL injury. Normally it takes two years uh, for football players to actually get back to where they are. But the fact that they're leaning on the run and not leaning on him per se so much, it might actually, you know, accelerate the expectations on that front. But overall, based on the system, I'm giving them a C. Okay. All right, so – so this one right here, like, I'm a huge fan of this guy. Like, I am. And I feel like, you know, with the Giants, he hasn't had, you know, the best opportunity to reach his full potential between the injuries and the offensive line. It hasn't been – we haven't seen his, his, you know, his full potential yet. And so so really quick, man, what, what's, what's the notes on Saquon Barkley here? All right, so we got Saquon Barkley. He tore his ACL. Um, he his in his right knee. Um, against so he had, wait, was was it against the Bears? Oh man, y'all dirty, bro. 
<laughs> so he had 19 rushes for 34 yards, zero TDs, um, six catches for 60 yards, and that was in two full games. Um, and it looks like he finished as the number 120 running back with only 15.4 fantasy points in those two games. So anyone, and I mean anyone who drafted Saquon Barkley, like they were probably down in the dumps, bro. Um, considering that his ADP was 1.03, which means he was a top three pick in the first round. And and and, and we are strictly speaking from um uh 10 team uh PPR format. Um so yeah, man, like it was really, really tough for Saquon Barkley on his last year, Jamar. Yeah, and so you know with Saquon, I I want to say that you know this year should be you know his best chance to to actually you know show us what he's really made of, just because of the fact that they gave Daniel Jones a lot of weapons to work with, so the pressure won't be I guess more on Saquon, just kind of similar to uh, Odell Beckham in that sense, like the system that Odell is in, you know, it won't be heavily emphasized on uh, OBJ. I guess kind of the same here with Saquon. You know, they draft, they uh, they signed Kenny Galladay. They drafted uh, uh, the wide receiver in the first round. Uh, I think last name, Tony. Uh, you have uh, Sterling Shepard. You have Darius Slayton. You have Evan Ingram. I'm pretty sure they signed Kyle uh, Rudolph as well. Um, I think they tweaked up the offensive line a little bit. And Daniel Jones is entering his third year. Normally, third-year quarterbacks, you know, you, you see a bit of a pro pro uh, progression right. from the first couple of years, significant progression. So with all that being said, I want to say Saquon is leaning towards an A here as far as, you know, what to expect. I, I think this is going to be his best year. I know – like I mentioned before, you know, guys coming off of ACS usually take two years. But we, we've seen anomalies, and I feel like based on his his freaking nature body, mm -hmm. it might be an anomaly. And the, the person I'm thinking of was Adrian Peterson, who came back from the ACL and just ripped the league to shreds. And I think his body type is similar to that regard. And so I, I, I do expect big things out of Saquon here. Okay. So, man, and again, like, so you, you touched on some key points, Jamar, and the way that this offense is set up, it's actually set up and it's built to score some points. I think this Giants team, even with Danny Dimes and like all of his, all of his weapons there, I think this team is only going to go as far as Saquon Barkley is going to take him. Like he's a huge part to this offense, not only in the rushing game, but in the receiving game as well. So, I feel like that I'm going to give him an A, man, with the with the talent that Danny Dines has around him, the Evan Ingrams, the um, the huge acquisition of uh, Kenny Galladay, which will be able to stress the stress the field. It's going to open up things for Saquon as well. And we don't talk enough about Danny Dimes' mobility, Jamar, to be able to get out in open space. Again, that's still going to open up things for um, Saquon Barkley. Like you said, I think it's based upon the individual's work, work ethic here and like that guy has been putting in, been putting in work. And like I have been seeing it. He looks fantastic. He looks like he's ready to roll. So I'm gonna give Saquon Barkley a A just based on, you know, just the current um nature in which the uh Giants are set up at this uh moment. And again, I think their defense doesn't get enough credit as well. Like I think they do show flashes of brilliance at times. So that is true. So so far, um on our grading scale, uh Odell Beckham Jr., you give him a B, I'm giving him a C. He's B minus, that. B minus. B minus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So B minus, <clears throat> yes. I give him a C. We're both giving Saquon Barkley an A here. Mm -hmm. All right. So next one. You know what? This this guy is in a you know, I guess he's he's in a special situation with, with these comebacks on this injury here. So so Joe Burrow, mm -hmm. not only he tore his ACL, he also tore his MCL. But Miraculously enough, I mean, I, from what I'm hearing, he's on track to be the starter of week one. Um, don't don't hold me to that. It is still, you know, <laughs> the end of June here. But the fact that he's, like, even on pace to, you know, to be the starter that early on, and I think the injuries came, like, 
past the middle of the season last year. That's that's incredible. Um, you know, from the eye test, Joe Burrow looked like the real deal before the injury. Mm-hmm. And so go ahead, man, and give us uh, the background on Joe Burrow here. All right. <clears throat> Joe Burrow left um, knee, ACL, and NCL. Oh, man, both of them in the same knee. So Joe Burrow was – he had a really solid a solid season in the games in which he played, 2,688 yards passing, um, a 13-5 to 5 TD to interception ratio, 37 rushes, 142 yards, and three more scores. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks like he had an ADP of 12.4, so somewhere near the middle of the 12th round last year Joe Burrow was picked, which is pretty good considering, like, he was like a rookie. Finishes uh, the season as the number 25 quarterback, um, the number 25 fantasy quarterback with 178.7 points. And that was all in 10 games, Jamar. 10 games. So, yeah. So, that means he tore it in October. Yes. Which, and that means if he was to start, we were looking at less than a year of recovery for this man. So, so yeah, the eye test, like I mentioned before, shows that this man is the real deal. Um, you know, they they added more weapons here. They they got his former boy from LSU, Jamar mm. Chase. What a great name, by the way. <laughs> um, I think they drafted an offensive tackle in the second round there because if you if you watched any of the games last year, he was running for his life and was still putting up good numbers. And that's probably the reason why he he tore his ACL because that line is trash. But nevertheless, um, Joe Burrow has the potential to uh, to definitely be great this year. Um, like I mentioned, drafted Jamar Chase. You still got Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. Like I cannot say enough about this guy. We mm-hmm. we really really are uh, like this guy. We we heavily heavily think that he's gonna you know have a breakout year. You still got Joe Mixon, who is a very very high quality running back. Um, you know, defense is still suspect, which would mean <laughs> that they'll be on the field, the offense will be on the field quite a bit. <laughs> so there's that's definitely, you know, their their potential overall to, to put up fantasy points is pretty high. And so, you know, with all that being said, I think I'm going to lean towards an A more than a C on this ACL grading scale, just because I feel like he's gonna exceed um his ADP right now for this year. And has a chance to actually do some things. So, so with that being said, what is his eight current ADP right now? Uh, his current ADP is. Wait for it. I just had it up. I am sorry. Like overall, his ADP is eighty four. So that means he's going in the ninth round. So, so that's pretty good. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like he can potential. I think he can crack the the top ten if all things said and done. He has that potential. He has that upside. No, I mean, dude, I'm with you, and your analysis was spot on. At, with the addition of a Jamar Chase LSU running mate, there's already familiarity there in that regard. I mean, Tyler Boyd, fantastic slot receiver. T Higgins, like, I mean, like he has you know stepped up tremendously. Um, and we look towards like the backfield with Joe Milkson. He is 100 percent healthy as far as what I've been hearing. Um, this That's guy is a dual threat, dual threat running back. Oh man, trust me. Uh <laughs> he was he was one of the ones up on up on that up on that bus that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> but I, I think I think he's gonna be fantastic. And the main key thing here, Jamar, I think they spent more than three picks on revamping that offensive line. So I mean, they see that their star quarterback goes out. And they what what do they do? They play they place they focus on that offensive line to try their best to keep this guy upright because he is the franchise quarterback. And with all of that being said, man, um, you even you even touched on it a little bit earlier. They're gonna be in a lot of games, but <laughs> they're gonna give up a lot of points, which means the offense is gonna be on the field, which means more plentiful chances for all of these offensive weapons. It seems like the perfect storm. It all depends on how healthy Joe Burrow truly is. Do not get this guy out there too early because that'll definitely be a, be a mistake. So I'm definitely going to go A and A plus even if I could. Once again, we we agree on that. So really quick, quick recap. 
So OBJ, you give him a B minus, I give him a C. Mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley, both give him A's. Uh, Joe Burrow, same thing, A's, as far as expectations. All right, so another guy here who uh, tore his ACL. Um, I'm familiar with the guy. Um, he's also known as the human joystick. Our guy, Tariq Cohen. So, uh, you know, in the Matt Nagy system, you know, especially his rookie year, he, you know, he came out and, you know, was spectacular, did his thing. Um, but, you know, since then, he hasn't, you know, really been that productive per se, mm -hmm. as far as fantasy wise. Uh, I know entering this year, the backfield is kind of crowded. We, we did sign Damian Williams. We already got David Montgomery. Um, we did draft a running back who I think is going to make the roster. And then you got Tree Cohen here. Uh, give us a quick rundown on Mr. Cohen. All right. So um, Tree Cohen tore his ACL, and that was in his right knee. He, it looks like he finished with 14 rushes for 74 yards, zero touchdowns. Um, six catches for 41 yards, and this was in a span of three games. Looks like he finished as the number 110 um, fantasy running back with only 17.5 fantasy points in three games. And, and this is like a shocker. So his ADP, Jamar, was 8.01. So he was somewhere around like the first two picks in the eighth, in like the eighth round. So. That 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 was a definitely uh shocker um stat for me when I looked it up. So yeah, I mean, at that point, I mean he had expectations of being a, a flex play because the year mm -hmm. before that, I mean, he definitely was a viable flex option. And so now So I wanna go, I wanna go first with this one, just to make sure that they know that we are not on like the same page and we're not just doing it based <laughs> off of everyone else. And I'm gonna do that because this is your team. You are, you know. Hashtag bear down. I'm going to let you end this segment with, with your thoughts. So my my look on Tariq Cohen, like with the addition of a Damian Williams, um, with you guys drafting a, another running back who you and I both agree should be able to be able to make this 53-man uh, roster, I'm going to go ahead and jump out there and give Tariq Cohen an L. And like my first L of, of the day, David Montgomery was fantastic down the stretch last year. Um, I think you and I went over his stats from like the past, like, um, like the last six games, and I don't want to mess up anything, but I think he had over eight, 800 yards, and he was averaging 20 fantasy points per game during that span. So he was absolutely on a tear. And um, I think he did enough to be able to securely and firmly grasp that RB1 um, status, and he would be my prototypical RB2 um, in, in this fantasy draft, but with RB1 upside, if he can continue down that same stretch. So with all that being said, I'm going to have to give an L. I'm going to have to give Tariq um, Cohen an L here. And just because of the fantastic play that David Montgomery has, um, you know, showed. And, like, it was right on time because I've been waiting on this. So. I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, honestly, you took the words out of my mouth. I'm giving this man an L. And, <laughs> and, that, and that sucks. I, I like he, he's a bear. That's I thought you were gonna have a little bit of um, compassion for him. No, man. Man, I, I did. I, I, That's no, he said I, no. No, <laughs> no I, I can't be biased here. I mean, crowded backfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, bears have position battles that probably almost every position going into training camp. Him coming back off an of ACL injury. I mean, even before the injury. I mean. His fantasy relevancy wasn't even like the greatest ADP right now. I think I saw it at 155. So he's only like valuable in deeper, deeper leagues right mm -hmm. now. So in your standard 10, 12 team, he's not even getting on the field or in your lineup. But if he is, then there's a problem with your team <laughs> and, and those type of leagues. So yeah, man, this. Out uh, the ACL grade, he's definitely uh, taking L's here, and I, and I feel bad for the guy. I like the guy, but fantasy relevance and anything dealing with fantasy football, no, nope, 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 nope. not doing it. Not gonna be able to do it. All right, so, so yeah, we we basically went through top four guys that torn ACLs that you know gonna be the most fantasy relevant. So we actually had some other guys here. 
who did not live up to expectations. And I'm going to start with this first guy here. Oh, boy. Who is near and dear to Deshaun's heart. <laughs> he is absolutely not. <laughs> Mr. Ezekiel Elliott. So, for those that don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to definitely let you take the reins on this one. But for those that don't know, you know, Ezekiel. Last time I checked, he was he was caught stealing money from the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones. <laughs> it, like like Zeke, it, if you played him in probably every game last year, you probably didn't make the playoffs in your league more times than not. Maybe you probably if you did, your the rest of your team was really strong because that man did not show up ever since that Prescott kind of went down last year. I think in week five. Uh, but yeah, uh, go, go ahead, man. Let let them know how you feel. Oh boy! Before we get into stats and anything, I I I feel like Jamar is poking fun strictly at me. Um, but what what can you do for like the people out there? Like if Ezekiel Elliott is sitting at number six, and based off the year that he had previously, I mean, like wh what do you what do you do? I was I was like shocked that he actually fell to me at six. And again, I wish I could take that back. And you know, and now I look at it in retrospect. But needless to say, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into his stats, man. So um, Ezekiel Elliott, he had a a multitude of injuries. It was a a groin, and then it was a a hamstring, and then it was a calf that kept him out. Um, but um, all things considered, Jamar, looking at his stats, so he had two hundred and forty four rushes, nine hundred and seventy nine yards rushing, six touchdowns with fifty two catches for three hundred and thirty eight yards and two touchdowns. So. And that was all in the span of 15 games. Now, again, he was in and out on a couple of those games. He did not play complete games, but 15 games were the games in which he did play in. So his ADP last year was 1.03. So, I mean, with his AP, ADP being 1.03, which means he was typically the number three pick in the first round. Um, with me having like the sixth pick, why wouldn't you jump at, jump at the chance to go ahead and you know, get, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, attain this guy. So right. he finishes the number nine running back, Jamar, in PPR format with 223 points. Even with all that being said, he did not live up to that ADP. He did not, in my opinion. Um, This was a guy in which, look, man, if you want to be the guy, if you want to get paid this top dollar, if the star quarterback of that team goes out, I need you to step up. Everyone needed you to step up, and you did not do just that. I don't want to hear any mistakes about them keying in on you, and it's th that's not going to make you turn over the football. And that was his biggest thing. With all that being said, he turned over the ball way too much, Jamar. So um, even, even with all that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into mine. I'm still going to give him an A. And, 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 this is, and this is beyond me, bro. I did not expect this. And that's just due to the fact that I believe that Dak Prescott will be will be back. Um, he'll be healthy. This is a team that is just one of the best offenses in the league when all parties are healthy. So I, I mean, I'm gonna have to give Zeke an A, even with my, you know, how disgruntled I am with this guy. So, <laughs> wow, I guess that's that's uh, pretty uh, grown up of you. Oh uh, man, like, like you said, you 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 cannot think with you know uh like you 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 cannot think on like the past year that he's that, that he's had or any hard feelings that you have towards that player so i mean yeah as it as it stands today which is 627 <laughs> i'm i'm gonna say that he is i'm gonna give him a name man and it really i really didn't see myself doing that this morning <laughs> fair enough i mean so so yeah, yeah, somehow Zeke did finish in the top 10 last year, which is crazy. Yes. Because if you watch them, the eye test showed that there's no way that he could have finished like that, but he did. Um, he definitely turned over the ball a lot. I remember a lot. One of those games, I think maybe week six or week seven, it was early on after Dak Prescott, you know, was done with that ankle injury. That uh, you know, Zeke not not once, but at least twice, like fumbled the ball, like lost lost the fumble, like it was crazy. I'm sitting here like, dude, do you even want to play football anymore? I, I I didn't get it. And then the game that he actually missed, it was during the fantasy playoffs when Tony Pollard was in there. Boy, oh boy, did Pollard you know come in and showed out, 
and got me to the finals. He, he surely did. But, I mean, with all that being said, I, I mean, you got a point. So the biggest thing he has going for him is Dak Prescott coming back. Mm-hmm. That That's going to, like, take a lot of stress, a lot of pressure off of Ezekiel Elliott. Dak Prescott, what he means to that offense, I mean, we, we found out how much value he, he is. And so, you know, with him having the weapons of Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, and them being so, like, pass-heavy nowadays, I mean, Zeke is going to have the lanes. I know the offensive line isn't, you know, once, you know, what it once was a few years ago, but – we, I mean, if you look at Ezekiel Elliott's, like, you know, first four games last year, I'm pretty sure he scored a touchdown. Each of those games had double-digit fantasy points. It was, like, ranked um, within the, between the top five and top uh, ten every single game before Dak got hurt. So Ezekiel Elliott's production is going to be based on Dak Prescott, without a doubt. And I know he's going, you know, he's definitely being drafted as RB1 right now. I mean, as he should be, because like you said, and like I said earlier, you know, recency bias, you know, you don't want to do that. Yeah. You don't want to draft on emotion. We know what Ezekiel is when all when everything is consistent. So, I mean, yeah, I guess by default, I mean, somewhere between an A and a C, as in, as far as expectations, he, he should meet those, but there's definitely a good chance that he's probably going to exceed expectations based on what he did last year. So Ezekiel Elliott is one of the safer options that we are, like, mentioning today. So don't be alarmed. It's okay to draft Zeke. I know how you feel. I mean, Deshaun definitely let us know how he felt. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay to draft Zeke and feel comfortable about it because Dak Prescott is back. That's mainly – the biggest thing for me is the fact that Prescott's back. Now, now this guy here that I'm about to talk about next. So this man played so bad last year to the fact that he got benched. <laughs> the fact that he was making headlines while on the bench. The fact that they that he he was not, you know, <laughs> like uh, a big fan of other players in the locker room. This man had to get traded. Like his his TD to interception ratio is basically one to one. Mm. I'm talking about your homeboy, no Carson Wentz. <laughs> oh, he ain't your homeboy. Definitely not. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> let Coast Coast Nation have that guy. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it went from uh from, from my boy Keelan's boy to 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 uh, to our bros and your cousin Vic and uh, Chris's boy now. Yeah, don't, don't tell him I said that, but. <laughs> But real quick, give us a quick rundown, Mr. Wentz. So, I mean, I know I led off with, like, the injury, like, first and foremost, but he didn't have one. We're just going to say that he had an injured heart for being for, for being benched, man. So his heart was a little bit broken. So, like, that's the, the injury designation that we're going to give Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wentz here. So 2,620 yards on um, passing, 16 touchdowns, 15, yes, 15 interceptions. And this is in 11 games. Jamar, like not even a full 16. This is in 11 games, 16 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Enough said. But the surprising thing was 52 rushes for 276 yards and five rushing touchdowns. So I think that's how he tried to make the best of his season is by getting in the end zone with his legs. But sorry, bro, that was not nearly enough to secure your starting job. Um, So it looks like he had an ADP of 9.12, which means he was in the First few picks in the ninth round. Looks like he finished last year as the number 22 quarterback um, with 213 fantasy points. So, yeah, he definitely underachieved and r- r- rightfully so. He got his spot taken. So, I mean, I mean, you know, uh, good, good, good riddance, I guess. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I, I want to say. Yeah, he's the only one on our list today that, uh, you know, that didn't live with the expectations, not not because of injury, because <laughs> he, he sucked. So I just, you know, call for what it is. Like, I get it. You know, his weapons, you know, was hurt. I get it. There was no Ertz, Alshon Jeffrey. Like, 
you probably need an a APB out on Alshon Jeffrey. I, I get that. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Sanders wasn't in the lineup all the time. I, I, I get it. But, you know, the way that the NFC lease was last year and the fact that could not take advantage of how poor that division was being played, like, you arguably was the best quarterback, like, supposed to be the best quarterback, like, in that division for the entirety of that season because that Prescott went out. You're supposed to be the guy. Yep. And it was, like, if you watch the games with your eyes, like, Carson Wentz, like, he, he – it looked bad. It was, you know, he had a couple of moments where, like, ooh, okay, that, that's a Wentz throw. That, like, it was – you had minimal flashes of – the Carson Wentz of 2017 when he was going to win the MVP before he got hurt. That's – that's it was just minimum. You probably count on your hand how many times you saw that. And he made, like, one or two decent throws a game, but everything else, it just looked bad. And what made it even worse was the fact after he got benched, um, Jalen Hurts came in with the same weapons that Carson Wentz had and actually looked like – like, the weapons actually didn't look as bad as what Carson Wentz made it out to be based on his production. That's the problem. And so now, you know, Carson Wentz, you know, goes into another situation here. It's probably the best situation for this man. He goes to a, a place where the coach was his quarterback coach during the best time of his career in 2017. A guy that still believes in the guy. They're not going to be pass heavy. They, they have, in my opinion, the second best running back tandem in the whole league. I mean, the wide receiver core... Suspect. It's solid. It's suspect. I, mean, I, I I just don't think that they have like a truly number one guy right now. They, I mean, they don't. But they, I feel like they have. If this was the NBA, they have role players for for wide receivers. Okay. They, they, yeah. So, but more importantly, they have a defense. They actually have a legitimate elite defense here, who be like who would you know actually give them you know the ball and like a uh, great field position. And with the running game being heavily favored, like Carson Wentz don't have to drop back and throw the ball 40 times. So Carson Wentz is in the best situation. So if Carson Wentz cannot perform with Indianapolis Colts, then like at this point, like like your relevancy, like it's not going to be there. You just like you're just going to be empty calories. And the only person that I really call empty <laughs> calories for a quarterback is Kirk Cousins. That's that's just what it is. And so right now his ADP is 159. So basically you're going in the 16th round right now in a wow. six in, in, a, in a standard draft. So basically you you just barely making the cut for a roster in a lot of leagues at this moment. So with all that being said, I'm giving him a C. I'm giving him a C. I think, you know, it's more so, you know, you got to believe it to see it type thing. You got to mm -hmm. see it to believe it more so. Like, in the perfect situation for your career right now, this is the crossroads of your career. I expect you to be on the better side of things when it's all said and done this year. But the proof is in the pudding. I mean, and the pudding says that you suck <laughs> right now. Oh, that's that's funny you should say that, Jamar, because I got, like, a little bit of a, of a, of a thing that was, like, kind of funny to me, so. I actually added this one to his, like, stats as well. So, Carson Wentz in a clean pocket in 2020. Clean pocket. Okay. No pressure. Ten interceptions. <laughs> Ten interceptions. Led the, led the league. Clean pocket. So, I don't want to hear anything about you lacking weapons at the wide receiver position. Jalen Hurts didn't have that same problem. These are all you, Carson Wentz. Like, these are on you. Clean pocket, 10 interceptions, 10 of your 15. Well over half your interceptions have come from you making a bad decision. Not even throwing the throwing and throwing the ball away. You just want to try to fit it inside of a pocket. Try to make something that's not there. So, oh, man, your analysis was spot on, Jamar. He is in probably a better position, the offensive line, much better. Not only in the passing on um, facet, but also in the running game. They have one of the best running back tandems in the NFL in um, Jonathan Taylor and Naeem Hines. Love those guys both. Um, they complement each other well. The only thing 
issue that I have defense solid rock solid probably going to be one of the better defenses in the league this year even though they did lose a player or two but it it does look like that wide receiver core is still in question um that's probably like the only knock and not the only knock on the team I think the coast will be great next year I just think that maybe hopefully Carson Wentz does not need you know like too good of like quarterback uh wide receivers there rather to become like relevant so i'm gonna give them a c as well but i'm gonna go a little bit lower i'm gonna just give them a c minus just based off of look i think this guy is like you said jamar probably in the best situation that he could have been in out of all the teams in which he wanted to go or which had interest in him so I think he's not going to turn the ball over much because they're going to take that run first approach from him. And I think that's going to min minimize his um, like turnovers, which means that those not going to be any minuses against him in, the, in that column, um, column rather. Mm -hmm. I think he's just going to be solid. I think he's going to be an average quarterback mate with above average flashes next year. But I think he is going to be a quarterback who's just going to be able to get it done. So I'm going to give him a C minus here. Um, I really don't like his upside, but I think that he is safe. I'm just going to use the word safe. I mean, the word safe <laughs> in, in his position, <laughs> it's not good at all. But Yeah, it does sound very Alex, Alex Smith-ish. So. <laughs> all right, we're going to leave it at that. Like, I'm tired of calling this guy uh, sorry. I mean, he, I mean, that's what he is right now, but I, I, I'll spare him. But I will talk about his teammate, though, who was apparently nowhere to be found. But it's like, you know, a couple of years ago, like this guy was top three. He was that dude. Position. He was that dude. And it feels like he's, he still can be that dude. I feel like philosophy's changed. And also, you know, Dallas Goddard, you know, came on the scene and, you know, ate into his uh, target share. I mean, I mean, Zach Ertz, potential was there. Technically, he's still on the Eagles. I don't see him being on the Eagles when training camp start. I, I don't see it. So I expect him to be traded here the next couple of weeks. But it's like last year, definitely didn't do him any favors. Um, so go ahead and give us that rundown on Zach Ertz. All right. So the designated injury on Zach Ertz last year was both a high and low ankle, Eesh. ankle sprain. So it looks like he had 36 catches for... Um, 335 yards, one TD. He did play in 11 games, but during those 11 games, Jamar, it just seemed like he was non-existent. Dallas Goddard did get injured as well, but he came back, and it seemed like he assumed that role of the number one tight end spot on that on on that roster. So he finished his fantasy's number 31 tight end with 77 and a half fantasy points. So and his ADP was 5.03, which means he was within the first three picks of the fifth round in the in the draft so man you know Zach Ertz on this team I'll have to give him an L Jamar because I don't think he'll be able to get it done with Dallas Goddard being there Dallas Goddard is the guy let's just go ahead and say that Dallas Goddard probably is the tight end one you get him at a much cheaper price he's younger um you know he's been out there more than Zach Ertz has and it seems like he's gonna stay out there more than Zach Ertz if he does remain with his team. But in the right position on the right team, I think Zach Ertz can be the Zach Ertz in which we weren't seeing. I heard like a little bit of whispers, like him going to like a Buffalo or a team like that, that will automatically shoot his um, upside through the roof to be paired with a Josh Allen. But as it stands right now, um, that's going to have to be my second L of the day with Zach Ertz unless he is traded to a team that is able to, you know, utilize his talent. Correct. So, so yeah, as of right now, and today, June 27th, with the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, he is taking an L right now. I mean, like you said, Dallas Goddard's there. He's cheaper. I mean, I know that's the main reason why the Eagles want to utilize Dallas Goddard. Mm -hmm. He comes at a cheaper price. Uh, you know, Zach Ertz, they like, you know, thank you for your services. You helped us deliver a Super Bowl. But at this point in time, you're going to be out the door, just like you did with Carson and uh, Alshon, who 
<laughs> and so, and so, yeah. Reason why we're bringing up Zach Ertz for for two things. One, he was drafted as a tight end one last year and mm-hmm. finished as a tight end four, based on what you're telling me. Yep. And second thing is there is a, a very high probability he's going to end up in a greater situation um, sooner than later. So, yeah, if he ends up on Buffalo, his, his stock is definitely through the roof and he will have relevancy again. If he ends up with the Tennessee Titans, who, who has a void at, at tight end, yep. he will have relevancy there as well. So, Zach Ertz still has the talent. Zach Ertz last year was just bad. So, he, he's a he's an L, but there's an asterisk next to it because there's still an unknown unknown grade here because we don't know what the end result will be by the time week one comes around. So I would say, you know, I guess if you own him in a dynasty league, definitely watch for every news report on that. Uh if you haven't drafted yet, just you know, just you know, keep just keep that in the back of your head that uh if you don't land one of those elite tight ends as in like Kelsey, Waller or uh, Kittle or you know even the tier two tight end, just keep in your back of your mind that Zach Ertz might have some some real value sooner than later. For sure. All right, so the last guy we want to talk about, and this is probably the serious scenario for this dude, in my opinion, out of all the guys that we mentioned. Because, like, for one, his, 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 his running mate is retired. Two, he was hurt last year and just couldn't get off the ground. And three, his potential replacements, that's what makes it scary. That's what makes it really scary. And so this, I know I know, I call, you know, like Wentz your boy and uh, <laughs> a couple other guys your boy, Zeke your boy, but now this this guy right here was legitimately your boy. And so go ahead and give us a rundown on Mr. Michael Thomas. Man, Michael Thomas, for like the past couple of years, he was definitely in the running. You can make a debate for being the best, you know, wide receiver inside football. And that was a lot in part due to Drew Brees and the game plan in which, you know, they utilized him heavily inside that offense. So Sean Payton did a great job uh, developing Michael, Michael Thomas within his system. So it looks like Michael Thomas mm-hmm. suffered from both a high ankle sprain and a hammy. So like the hammy is tough for a wide receiver. I mean, it is tough. We see um, players like Julio Jones and A.J. Brown go um, deal with those. So it's definitely tough to recover from. It may it may seem like something minor, but for a wide receiver who needs to use that hammy a lot, yeah. So it looks like his 2020 season's um, stats um, were 40 catches for 438 yards, zero touchdowns in seven games. He finished as a number – 95 uh, wide receiver with 83.9 points in seven fantasy games. And his ADP was 1.06, which means he was the sixth pick, typically toward toward the middle of the draft in the first round. So, Jamar, I like like Michael Thomas a lot. I I really do. But let me just go ahead and throw some stats. I'm going to go back to his best season which was 2019, 149 catches, 149, 1,700 yards receiving, nine touchdowns. And those days are over. That, that, that's, that's the reason that I said that. Year prior, 125 catches. Year before that, 104 catches. I think those days are over. I think it's going to be somewhere between, you know, high 80s, you know, high 90s, I think – for me um, in this situation, I think they're going to lean a little bit more heavily on Alvin Kamara in this in this system. Now, it depends a lot on which quarterback is going to um, become QB1. And the, the way how I've been reading it, Jamar, is th- both of these guys are going to be utilized a lot. And this is from Sean Payton's like own mouth. That, and those quarterbacks are Taysom Hill, who has been there with the organization for, I, I believe, about five, five years now. And it looks like Jameis Winston is coming to his sophomore season with the Saints. So um, from my knowledge, if Jameis Winston gets more playing time than than um, than uh, Taysom Hill, I think it'll benefit Michael Thomas. So and I say that to say this, Jameis Winston is what I call the ultimate gunslinger. He doesn't he doesn't he doesn't care. You know what I mean? He's going to throw the ball and 
Taysom Hill is going to be a more running type quarterback there. So it's going to be, he's like the Swiss Army knife. But with all that being said, great talent. He's still young. I'm going to give Michael Thomas an A. And just his upside is going to depend on which quarterback is in at, at whatever given time. So. All right. So the scariest thing besides the quarterback situation that you mentioned, the fact that he basically was drafted in the first round last year, which I remember, mm-hmm. and he finished at wide receiver 10. He was a wide receiver 10. There is nothing you can do with a wide receiver 10. Nope. At all. That man played in seven games, gave you zero touchdowns. He basically was a shell of himself last year because of the injury. Like the hammy, that is tough to deal with in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So that's one of those you just have to rest. And that's one of those that I feel like that just lingered with you for the rest of the season type deal. That just, it just sucks. That's just the way it is. Having said all of that, um, I'm actually going to be on the opposite end on you on this one. Based on what you're telling me as far as the quarterback situation, like let's let, let's be clear. If Taysom Hill is in there, like you said, dude, Michael Thomas' stock just just plummeted. James Winston in there, I mean, he, he has a chance to, you know, be relevant. But I I don't see him – I definitely don't see him being a wide receiver one this year at all. At all. I, I, I can't see it. There, I feel like there's no avenue for me to see him as a wide receiver one. <clears throat> that so what, what, is he, what, is he, what is he going as right now? Like, what's his current ADP? Uh, 31. Okay. Wow. So – to me, I think if anybody's drafting Michael Thomas this year, you are if you take him, you are not taking him with with comfort. You you're gonna have some uncertainty there. You you're not like you know feeling good about yourself all the way because in the back of your head it's like Drew Brees isn't there. I gotta rely on Mister Thirty for Thirty and a Swiss Army knife. They don't throw the ball. <laughs> Like, that's, that's what it's about. Like, that's crazy. But I will say this for as far as Jameis, the time that he actually played last year and when he was actually in the game for, for that brief moment, he didn't look bad. Not and at I, all. And I don't – and part of it maybe just because they wasn't game playing against him or maybe he's actually, you know, comfortable in the system. I, I don't know. But <clears throat> if Taysom Hill is relevant in the quarterback controversy – in the, in, the, in, the, in the offensive playbook as quarterback, I'm sorry. I I, I can't. Unless Taysom Hill is going to play full-time tight end or something and James Winston is going to be the full starter, until then, I'm giving this man an L. I, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it, Deshaun. I, I, I don't. I I can't. I'm not touching this man at all. Pause. I'm, I'm just not drafting this dude. No, I mean, I, 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 I see all of the red flags there. Like, I do. I see, and, like, man, I, I, I don't know why I'm running those stop signs, Jamar, or running those red lights, but <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm thinking it's just based on the talent, me basing on, I think, my, in, in my own personal opinion, the best chance that gives them to win football games is Jameis Winston. And this is just to be deep inside the season. And like you mentioned, in a couple of games, I even think he threw a couple of touchdown passes um, last year, if I'm not mistaken. I know he threw one bomb on like a on like a play action play, or it was like a a flea flicker or something with him being in there. But um, I think it's it's if 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 Sean Payton can develop a game plan to limit his turnover, and I think he would be the coach to be able to do just that. And this is strictly talking from a Winston to Michael Thomas connection here, not a Taysom Hill to um, Michael Thomas, because like his passing aspect is kind of like suspect at at the moment. You just have to, you know, take account into Taysom's legs whenever he's in there. So it gives him an extra element. But I like I like James Winston a lot, a lot more for the system and how it should be run, in my opinion. But 
I mean, that's neither here nor there. I guess we'll see. You and I are but on both opposite ends of this one, so I, it, it, it will be um, fun to see how this one plays out. Uh, absolutely. I wish that man the best. Uh, I'm pretty sure he feels a certain type of way right now. But <laughs> yeah. We'll see when he gets to training camp. And see your boy licking his fingers, talking about some uh, crab legs and stuff. Man, you was... know, I, I'm not sure if you saw like the uh, like he was doing this thing, like for oh some my reason. Gosh. Like, like, I don't know why his 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 videos or whatever he do is just like funny. I, I think he's just one of those funny people without trying to be funny. So it's Jameis Winston is like a character to me, like from like a cartoon or something. So. Gotta be man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the only way to put it. And, and so you know, just. Overall conclusion here, I mean, we, we named eight guys, four of them off of ACL injuries, four just, you know, just didn't live up to expectations. Overall, I mean, I mean, you know, take these guys, you know, with a grain of salt, but this is our approach on how to approach these guys. If, you know, if your turn and you see these players right there within that window of guys to draft, you know, OBJ, we you gave him a B minus, I think. Mm -hmm. I gave him a C. Saquon, we both gave him A's. Joe Burrow, we both gave him A's. Terry Cohen, bear down, but you way down, sir. So we, we gave you L's on that one. Zeke, I mean, I think we both gave him A's. Yeah, we did. Wow, I gave him an A. Yep, yeah, I sure did. did. You sure did, man. Mm -hmm. Uh Carson Wentz, I think we gave him C's on that one. Yes. Uh, Zach Ertz, he's taking the L for now based on his situation. And then Michael Thomas, you gave him an A, and I gave mm -hmm. him an L. So we, we we will see. We will definitely see. So, so yeah, this, man, this concludes uh, today's podcast. Uh, hey, let them know where, where they can find us, man. They can find us on Apple Pod, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and other platforms. So basically everywhere where podcasts are found, Guess what? Me and my homeboy, Jamar Goodman, are there. Destination Fantasy. So we are streaming live right now on YouTube as well as Facebook. So um, definitely check out check out the YouTube page, man. We've been getting a little bit better with like the content, getting a little bit more creative. So, you know, stop 